Hi, everybody. I'm Paul at Aura Wellness Center. Um, I'm the director of yoga teacher training here. And what we're going to do today is talk about yoga nidra secrets. They're actually a way to help you as far as streamlining your practice. And you could call it um, yoga nidra made simple. Um, the first one is time. You don't need to make an appointment with yourself for yoga nidra. It's one of those things where when we think of different types of practice or different types of um, activities that we're involved in, what happens is we set aside time. Everyone goes to bed. So it's one of those things where depending how much you're into it, you can actually set aside quite a bit of time or hardly any time before you go to bed. Um, for example, some people, what they'll do is their sleep cycle, they just go straight into doing yoga nitra there. Um, some people do um, different exercises. Some of them are mental and some of them are physical. Physical would be, for example, a cool down series that you're doing that's a bedtime asana series or um, and or you could also practice something like a body scan or stage by stage relaxation before you actually practice yoga nidra. The question I get a lot of times is from students, is yoga nidra really a sleep meditation or is it sleep, is it meditation, is it both? Um, I think you have to look at the actual title of what it is, yoga nidra. So there's your answer right there. It's a form of sleeping meditation. Uh, the, you'll get some people who will say, no, it's, it's actually sleeping. It's actually meditation. Um, but to me, it is the twilight between meditation and sleep. So somewhere between almost like you're working this tightrope, do you have to stay there? always walk in the tightrope. If it makes you feel tense, don't even worry about it. Just do one thing or another. Stick with being very much into the procedure or just be casual and let it go. And the other thing is, as far as if I was to look at yoga nidra, it makes it different from other types of activities, it's really a user-friendly delivery system. So it's something you can practice every night before you go to bed. You might fall asleep. I don't think that's a big deal. You might not fall asleep. You might stay in a state of yoga nidra. So it's one of those things where nobody turns around and says, I lost out on this one. I remember in uh, meditation when a lot of us first started practicing, it was all about sitting up straight and keeping the spine straight. And I understand that, but the, for some people, they're not very comfortable that way. This is easy enough. You could do it on your back, on your side. You could do it uh, by using a chair and let your lower legs just rest on the seat of the chair. Sometimes we call the legs through the chair. Um, then with considering that it has an open back. So what we've got really is a user-friendly delivery system where it's not something where you have to be uh, punished by doing the practice. And some people will say, I never thought of meditation as punishment. Well, some people do because they have back problems to start with. So they're not comfortable. And then when you tell them to sit a certain way, they're not comfortable there either. And what we started to find out as we 
started to work with more and more students over time was it, the legs to the chair was actually a good type of posture to work, not just for yoga nidra, but also for mindfulness meditation. And granted, as long as I'm talking about a chair, you could use a chair. Um, the other thing is, as far as uh, postures, ideally, you'd like to keep the spine straight. Um, it's going to be uh, nearly impossible to be straight unless you're doing the legs through the chair. So that's one of those where if you said to me, which would be the straightest way to keep, I mean, which would be the best way to keep my spine straight, there you, there you have it. Um, the other thing is I wouldn't get too bent out of shape um, over the posture itself, just as long as you're in good posture and as long as you're relaxed, that's all you need. And if you're a teacher, as long as your students are relaxed, it's more important that, there be, that they be relaxed because they're gonna get a lot out of the experience. The first thing that, you know, a lot of people don't get too deep into, even in teaching sometimes, they don't mention this to students is, what you wanna do really is release baggage. So we have, loads and loads of baggage. Everybody has it. There's different things that might be occurring now or occurred in the past. And what happens is they pile up and it's almost like a laundry list of um, problems that people are, are dealing with. And it's, um, could be anything. I mean, it could be coping with loss. It could be um, coping with something like, um, somebody who you'd like to talk to who's passed away. Um, and that's that conversation is just not gonna happen anymore. Um, there are um, a number of different issues that people run into. Um, some people have, um, where they get hung up on um, very small things. And what happens is, a very small problem has now turned into a very big problem because they're actually all bent out of shape or they're you know, on prescriptions and everything else to try to deal with it or cope with the byproduct of different types of reactions within their mind and also that affect their body. So that's the big thing, releasing letting go of any kind of baggage that you have. And that's the thing about the idea or the concept of resting into awareness. You're reaching a state of mind where what you're doing is you're just allowing yourself to drift like you would if you were falling asleep, but instead to drift into a mindset where you're still able to focus. You're still able to focus your working on your awareness. And some people will say different cues like relax at the source. And what do they mean by that? The source is the overactive mind. So the mind, a lot of us learn this in meditation, basically, we refer to the, it, as the monkey mind, will not settle down. But worse yet, nowadays, what happens is we have an overstressed mind that is dealing with a lot of problems, a lot of different things. And you, you're not designed to carry those kind of situations around with you for weeks, months, years. Actually, if you start to look at uh, primal humans, they probably only dealt with uh, problems of, say, another tribe or a predator, um, maybe for um, an hour tops. And then now all of a sudden, what we're 
doing here is we're putting ourselves um, through an ordeal that can last weeks, months, years. So it's one of those things where what we have to do is just settle down. And how do we keep settling down? Practice. Sleep happens every night. And this is a great way of dealing with things like, for example, insomnia. Someone might say, well, you know, you just said it wasn't exactly sleep. But the thing is, if you go through a yoga nidra session and then you decide right after it probably be just as well to go to sleep, you're going to be fine. If you fall asleep during yoga nidra, you're going to be fine. If you fell asleep, didn't practice yoga nidra, woke up and had insomnia, yoga nidra might be fine. So that's what I'm saying. Sometimes people have different ways of practicing yoga nidra and all of them will, can fit you and your needs. With that, stop there and I wish you the best.